we already have a question in the YouTube stream. Um, I will read it out loud. So, um, Paul is asking, from your diverse backgrounds and experiences, what are the things that I should keep an eye on? Um, what I should could keep on uh, oh, that I should keep an eye on in my work environment to support diversity. So basically, like, what are the things that I could do, and like, what are the things that I should be aware of in my work environment to make uh, first steps? Um. Sorry, I would um, have to take one moment to get my charger because my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, Francisco or Shamla, please feel free to take this question. Yeah. If I had to choose one specific thing, it would be listen and observe, because having a first step before we even go into solution mode is the analyzing mode, and taking employees' experience seriously for one interacting with all of your employees and the different range of employees observing how things might not work or function properly and how that can be changed this is if i had to put a universal stamp on it that is what i would do as an employee um i could add one more point like since i'm an android developer and i've worked in it for a long time i would like that if somebody does not acknowledge me as a woman and treat me as a developer. So I don't want to be discriminated or even like had, nobody should have these things in the mind that, oh, we have a woman developer. I would just call, okay, just call me a developer, right? <laughs> so the bias starts right there that when you start adding these tags of women or, you know, men, why do men don't get that tag? Because everything turns out to be universally male, right? <laughs> Only women get to have these tags. So I would just leave these things out uh, completely out of professional workplaces. All right. Um, Shamala, do you have to like say something to this maybe as well? Mm -hmm. I think um, I totally agree with um, um, both Francisca and uh, Saumya. Uh, one of the things that I would suggest is like, you know, on, on, on the same lines is observe and analyze. Like when you observe that, you know, so, so many times we have all come across that in a meeting that you would raise your voice and somebody was all, is always cutting you down or like, you know, not giving you the voice to speak, you know, you know, be aware of that. And, you know, as an ally, you could really like, you know, um, point this out and say like, hey, you know, you should probably give the opportunity uh, for this person uh, to talk. You have been cutting this person uh, all the time. Like it doesn't happen to uh, uh, just women. It, it always happens to, um, you know, uh, people who are not, you know, it, it's always like the loud voice wins. So please be aware, like you know, what's happening around you and 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 be a good ally and, and step up and, and, and speak when, when something is not right. Um, if I can add to that, to that perspective, um, we often see situations where there is like women's programs and diversity programs, and it's that's fine and dandy, but if you only train or coach or mentor the people that are sort of perceived as the non-standard, then nothing will ever change. Allyship is so central. So even just not just saying okay be an ally and act like an ally because oftentimes especially when we look towards gender diversity i found that in these situations that Jamila just described men were completely unaware of what was going on until afterwards i explained it to them and why it's because of their socialization oftentimes so developing that sense is just as important so we need encouragements trainings coachings whatever not just for the let's say the the, the person the group that we want to encourage that we want to thrive no we need it for everyone everyone needs to change cool so um the things you've said were now like more about when you already have like the people in your company but um like my company has the problem we don't have that many people like in our company like what can we do to make us more um, attractive for 
like folks like you. So I don't know, like what, when you are looking for new jobs or something like that, like what are you looking for? Um, maybe uh, one of the things that recently um, I kind of like had a survey uh, where I put like, you know, some questions like what would make this interesting? So you, if so first you want to know, like, you know, what kind of cultural additions that you want to uh, bring uh, to your team. So which means like first thing is to go and look at your job description or the website and the kind of language and, and the focus like, you know, um, that you put on the job description. So um, saying something like, uh, we need someone who is a good front end developer, back end developer, knows AWS, can fix MacBooks when it's broken. You know, you're asking for a whole IT department. And, and most of the time, it is basically, you know, um, proven that women tend to be putting 200% I'm just talking like women, but you know, in, in general, like, you know, a lot of folks um, basically look into this job description and then say like, okay, you know, you have like um, words, something that say superhero or like, you know, the superlative uh, words, like, you know, the first step is to go back and look at the kind of language the job description is having, uh, you know, um, and it's it asking for a whole IT department, like, you know, things like that tone it down or, and also have a look at your website, you know, it, it shouldn't look super fake in terms of like, you know, uh, diversity, like Photoshop pictures or like, you know, you, you say something, but you do something else, uh, things like that. Like, you know, you have to bring authentic and organic credibility, um, um, uh, you know, to, to invite people so that like, you know, they find a safe space. And for me, the first part would be to have a look at the job description. That would be the first place to start. Uh, Shama, you, you reminded me of a situation where I went uh, for a freelance gig and I went to the company to to get to know everyone and they had a smoke room. They didn't have a parents room, they didn't have a quiet room, they didn't have a medic room, they had a smoke room. And that just, that was very vivid because that's, it was yeah. difficult for me to imagine myself in a, in a, in a company where there's a smoke room. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> the pacing sent all the wrong signals, uh, and, and as a, again, I don't think that this was consciously done, but um, just the way how how do you invite and onboard someone that starts at the very first first touch point that a person has with the company, and that goes all the way through the employee experience up to wherever in the career ladder they are going, and we have to always ask ourselves about implicit biases as well. A lot of the times it's like I have I to this day and I'm stating this publicly in this meetup, I have a bias against women in my subconscious because I was raised that way. I was raised with men are more valuable. They can do more than women. So up until this day, I have situations where I ascribe more, um, let's say, competence to men. But I also know that I have it. So I constantly question and ask myself. I challenge myself and if we have that that uh, consciousness in every single person then i think we're already at the point where we're more open to actually questioning all of our language our thoughts our actions and so forth to then permeate every single aspect of the company there is there are no simple answers for complex questions but there are complex solutions for complex questions um i have something to add if both of you are so um, also like I feel uh, because you asked during hiring for a process, I actually have, I do think that um, like if you go to the communities and look for women, uh, it's much easier to actually source women out, right? Like the talent. Uh, also, like for instance, women tech makers, women who code, where there are huge communities where you can come in. Even in like Coder B, there was like freelance gigs where people found uh, just by being there at a meetup, right? So uh, just be present uh, and look for places where women hang out and uh, do this as well. That is very organic way of finding people. And you can also connect with them on the lines that you can on personal level and pitch your company and why you think could this person be a good talent in your company, right? So it's more personal that way. And women, I think in general, value this personal connection. And uh, I also see that um, it's not just that, like mostly all the websites, like, like I said, code of conduct. 
uh, I had an issue where uh, I was faced with like sexual harassment in Berlin once. So then the the founder stepped up immediately and like removed this person and said, okay, we do not allow this kind of culture in our company, right? So um, then because of this incident, then we started uh, thinking on the lines that in India, I had this companies, every small company had work ethics, code of conduct, everything set like initially. So like, I don't find this quite often in Berlin and I do make a point to actually ask HRs or whoever is concerned to talk about this because like I said, uh, psychological safety for women is way more important as well where people work. And um, some things I also did a research on was another thing like mothers want a crash or a kindergarten or uh, however, uh, which Francisco was also mentioning that having a parent room or a crash is much more important than having like a game room or even like, I don't know, smoke room, nap rooms, things like that. And uh, also when it comes to games, right? Like there's kicker, there's snooker, there's everything that men want. It's not like women are asked also because there are no women, right? <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot of things like this, that when you walk in, the interiors could be not that, uh, you know, friendly. It might look very not warm and ambience wise. That is another thing, like design has a lot of uh, effect on mentality and mindset. But uh, so can, can, can I add on to your point of parents room? Sure. Yeah. Send men into uh, the so-called baby pause, like have them take parental leave. And yeah. men also, <laughs> like men, we, we have so many great men in tech taking care of their children. So sure. care, like they, they, you can see that really, really well. And a lot of companies just are on sort of the, 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 the default mode of, yeah, the woman is going to take parental leave, but not the man. Send your yeah. man into parental leave and have backup and have situations where they can comfortably do so. And then you already have an atmosphere that will attract women from the outside much, much more. Just sorry for adding on to that, Samia. But no, I just... that's totally uh, valuable, I think. And if there are already women, that's like a bonus thing because you kind of yeah it's it's way more attractive when there are women employees uh, and they're working with like eight or ten guys even in small startups i would just say no like outright rather than you know if i have to fight with 10 people on a daily basis and make my point uh, without any support i'd rather not do this right like, i've had experiences as well so yeah like um that's always good to have like people from different uh, backgrounds also to um, support somebody's claim because otherwise who is going to support you when, uh, yeah, there's a difference in opinion, for instance, right? There should be a neutral pers uh, perspective to everything, so. But, but I also had situations where I heard stories of in the application process, a lot of women were placed into the application process so that the candidate was in touch with a lot of women just after they started, it turned out that there weren't actually that many women and they had pulled all of the women of the organization into the application process, which is also not good. Try to stick to what you have, be yeah. transparent, be honest. <laughs> Otherwise, what will happen is the woman will probably just, you know, end up leaving or replace women with whoever is has a diverse background. Um, if that person doesn't feel supported because they had this, this impression that the company was going to be like that, they will end up just leaving. And that's a lot of investment into onboarding and so forth. That's also not valuable. So honesty, sincerity, they go a long way. And equal pay as well. Equal pay is great. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, one of, the things, one of the things that I kind of like want to touch base is also, I mean, despite like however developed we are getting, like still, um, you know, women are primary caretakers for the family. So having like remote options, work from home, flexible timings, four days work week, you know, all of these things kind of like, you know, really, really uh, matter, uh, you know, not just for women. So uh, one of my friends uh, recently said that, you know, if you if you fix a problem for, you know, one particular set of group, you are probably fixing problem for, you know, you don't know who like 
for example like if you have these kind of like flexible working hours or um you know four day work week uh, a, a single uh, parent like you know is also benefited uh, from from that you know they they could be a uh, men single parent who are taking care of kids like you know you you, you don't know who um, is going to be benefiting uh, uh, from this so like you know having these kind of thoughts in 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 the mind like you know with respect to remote work work from home i think corona has kind of like um uh, proved that you know uh, i mean despite everything that's bad happening around us it kind of like gave us a push towards like you know thinking remote putting in, in in like you know effort into documentation and you know putting into communication you know a lot of these things also happen so these kind of things also help like to um you know bring diverse folks into your team Yeah, that's, that's very interesting because like for me myself it makes me aware that like a lot of the regulations or a lot of the standards or like the kind of like implicit biases we have like they are from the rules that came from times where i don't know maybe even women weren't even allowed to work so obviously these rules were made by men and with the needs for men and like like every person if it's like if it comes down to gender or like to other kind of uh, ethnicity issues like we all have different kind of needs like basically every person has their different kind of needs and like the the goal in the end should be kind of like to not uh, look for gender or don't look for ethnicity but to make it like for every person with their own like personal needs like uh, like you francisca said with like when it comes to illnesses or when it comes to gender or when it comes to ethnicity to have like a safe workplace like um a safe workplace space where you could work and be like acknowledged for the person you are and not for the type of human or whatever you want to call it you are so um yeah, that that thing what you guys what you folks said is like really really cool, because uh, it makes it makes um, it shares sort of like awareness for these kind of things that we usually don't think about because they tend to be so normal for us even they're not normal at all just like because you're I don't know just like me a white privileged man in his mid age so yeah. I uh, totally agree with you guys. Uh, okay. Clemens, Clemens, one addition. Yes. I was once asked at a meetup, uh, if I meet a person in a wheelchair, uh, can I ask them what they have? It's a very innocent question. And I said, yes, but get to know that person first because it's just one aspect about them. It's just one thing that defines them as a person, as a character, as whoever they are. They are person first and foremost. So every person potentially has the potential to be a manager, to be a leader, to be uh, contributing in astonishing ways. It's about unlocking that potential. So first of all, seeing the person. It's challenging, yeah. but we need to remind ourselves of that fact. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And, it, and I mean, if you think about it, it makes totally sense because if you get to know someone from the beginning, you wouldn't ask them like personal questions at first, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to like some people, like a person I met in a store, and ask him. So, okay, um, if, like, how was the death of your father for you? So, um, and and it basically comes down to that because, like, like you said, no, isn't that that behind all these kind of things there are stories and they can hurt or maybe they're happy. I don't know, but at first they're personal. So yeah, good, a really good point. Uh, we have another question in the chat um once again from paul um and he's asking um uh, we're organizing a lot of events which tips can you give for event organizers to be more inclusive um on site or remote um i i think for on-site events like having childcare is one of the um uh, best things that um, um you could do and also event location should be accessible like you know um this 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 could this is one of the main things and also when i think one of the other stuff for the remote is like you know having um uh, proper transcription maybe upfront given to uh, people and you know those kind of things is also like helpful I also jokingly said, um, well, not jokingly, but but honestly and earnestly, uh, network. Um, we had I, at a meetup this week. Um, I basically said, "Oh, you're looking for a group that does so and so. I can connect you. Ask, 
ask, ask, ask. And even if it gets tired, I think we had that point uh, at the very beginning, ask for recommendations. And also, I think, Somia, you mentioned that as well. Um, people that have a diverse network already attract a more diverse network and that sort of multiplies. So oftentimes, um, I, I once even got the question of, oh, you can recommend a female speaker in DevOps. Who is she and where do I get? <laughs> I was like, yes, I can recommend two, um, which is rare, which is rare, um, but they are there. They are there, they are existing. Ask and, 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 and don't give up. Sometimes it might be super, super frustrating, it might be super, super challenging to, you know, go to all these people and basically beg, but do it just do it and don't be satisfied with let's say the the white straight dude middle-aged lineup and that's it yeah thanks for that francisca i also feel this there are lots of speakers women speakers and um i also see in many meetups it's all kind of a trend not to like look for people just like how people don't look for women developers <laughs> i've given up on women devs like you know kind of the same mentality like why should we when there are so many guys available to talk you know so it's important to make sure that the profile is diverse and everybody brings something to the table from different backgrounds and that's thanks for mentioning that actually yeah um, uh, just in uh, addition, uh, at one of my uh, meetups, it happened that there was a lady who came uh, for a workshop and uh, by the end of the workshop, uh, she started like attacking two guys who she was sitting with on the table and uh, using, you know, abusive language. And I had to like really apologize to these guys and uh, kind of remove her from the meetup group. So like one of the examples is like this is not like I would say it is possible that women are also abusive right to, against men. It's not a norm that or anything uh, that could be that women are being protected by code of conduct. It's for everybody. So that's why it's important. Like I always say we abide by Berlin code of conduct dot org, which has completely details of what that Berlin code of conduct is and most of the communities abide by this and when you throw or have meetups or groups where there are many people uh, coming there and involving and engaging it's important to make sure you provide a safe space right that's why it's important to ask them to sign up by reading this code of conduct and what are your rules for this kind of uh, like for instance it could be like no littering or pick up your own trash could be one of them right so yeah i think this is uh, something that i wanted to add i also thought spontaneously again i mean there are probably thousands of things that we could tell you because we have experienced all that have gone through that we are all organizers um but corporations with other groups fabulous stuff especially there are so many let's say groups that have the label of encouraging diversity just collaborate with them and don't do it because you want to increase your diversity. Also, I had that discussion this week, like, can I approach the, the, you know, black tech group to get more black people involved in my meetup? No, don't do it. Do it, do something, do a hackathon with them or just have, you know, a, a joint meetup because you want to have fun with them. Do it, do it that way. And then everything else will follow. Don't expect that all of a sudden you will have a black organizer on your team just because you wanted to have a black organizer. No. Um, if you do these initiatives and you put your heart and soul into them, there will be people that have a different background and then you just end up cooperating or joining the board or whatever, it, just like as in other meetups. But cooperation with other groups, always a fabulous idea. Cool. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up as yeah. well. I think being authentic, you know, authenticity is something people value in these groups way more that I've seen that uh, people want to kind of stop this like tokenism and things like that that's why it's important it's like way more effort than one can imagine but it's well paying off later in but because it's a long-term uh, goal and long-term effort that is required and it won't be like in next month you'll find a speaker and everything's gonna change for you right so yeah yeah, that's that's a good point that there's no no quick fix for this so you have to be like earnest with uh, that you want to be like that and that's like a change process and this takes time and it's not fixed by inviting some people 
just for that and then take a photo and then yay you go so it's more like uh, like you said like uh, taking connections isn't it like taking connections connect with the people and have like a proper relationship like for them cool um our paul is like asking questions uh questions and questions so here's like another one he uh, wrote in a jar in the chat and it's like um if you think outside of the company itself how can a company change society by being aware in relations with customers partners and suppliers um i didn't totally understand the question can you repeat it yes sure um if you think outside of the company itself how can a company change society by being aware in relations with customers partners and suppliers um for better understanding i just post the question here in the chat as well <laughs> i mean one of the things that quickly comes to my mind is kind of the products that you make is also what you're projecting as a company to outside like um if you have a product and the product takes care about like you know the accessibility needs it's it takes care of the user needs and and, and things like that this is um also helpful and uh, one of the things i recently like you know uh, talked with um, um someone is also like you know um in terms of a uh, supplier like if you as a company has certain values and then you you can also like ask your supplier to abide by those those kind of like you know uh, uh, values like you know to have a, a diverse team of people working you know on uh, on on the products or like you know uh, also treating uh, you know the suppliers as you uh, also like you know um, like you treat your own employees and and, and so on like this is what quickly comes to my mind like one of the ma main things is like you know uh, put emphasis on on the on the, on the products like you know uh, what you develop and, and make it accessible put efforts on it you know empathize with your um, uh, users and, and and so on this could really like you know uh, build up in in terms of like you know how you can be that exemplary role model you know to the society and at the top of my head also um especially when you have when you're a company that has for example events like let's say customer um, demos and so forth have the same standards that you hold yourself to as well with the with the customers or with the people that are in your network uh, if you will have a week full of presentations only again by white straight middle-aged dudes um, how, that says a lot about uh, you being not very picky uh, or just you know accepting the fact um, and also what I what I've seen uh, implemented is usually we tend to go to, we tend to pair uh, people that are very similar to each other. So, for example, if you're a customer success agent, for example, and then, you you know, you, you, you pair one person who's very similar to the other side so that you have sort of this. Oh, yeah, you know, they, they will get along well. Um, maybe it's a good idea to mix that up a little bit and to pair, let's say, uh, ma man and woman or to pair young and old or, for example. So that there are new synergies can can exist so or can be created um and just taking generally taking a stance i mean what we have seen in the last weeks with uh, the demonstrations and so forth and then um there was even an incident with the women tech makers in berlin where uh, the women tech makers berlin were called out for not taking a stand against uh, or uh, taking a stand for the black lives uh, uh, matter movement um, where i'm not saying that it should be done or shouldn't be done but it's very helpful to not just if you take a stand take a stand but also to act upon that so not just you know uh, post maybe a tweet with oh yeah we're so and so and we we, we support but then not doing anything following up is also crucial so just having that awareness uh, of what's going on in the environment what's going on in the world and then picking that up and, and showing um, that you care and that you support in whichever way that will be possible for you as a company um i have a point on a user uh, di having diverse and attracting diverse users right like for business because uh, not just in like um, the i know the question said uh, in the society not just in the company but the company in the company users uh, i have seen like majority of the users and ads targeting users of 
only one certain uh, homogeneous groups and I have worked for companies where I was the only woman developer and still I could see that like there were less than 10 percent of women on the platform for instance and I had to speak up and say something uh, to the you know founders and make sure they put something out there where women could come and like spend time on the apps for instance so like even women's problems or somebody else's problem is can be some like a man's problem as well or you know it, it doesn't have to be solving problems for one uh, just because you thought about it or it's a good idea uh, it could be a social problem in general which women are facing or people of uh, some other group or minorities facing so uh, kind of being aware like socially providing value uh, by not just uh, making compartment compartment compartmentalizing everything and I finally got it so instead of that like bringing social values also to businesses kind of matters and not just diversity like I said right it could be users also focus like why is there not enough women users so look at the data look at how you can improve it uh, so it's yeah it, it is a a responsibility in a way that everybody could work on right uh, and this will actually change the social value itself and uh, this is actually going to impact the society itself if you have more women on the team or more users on the team so um, yeah in in chart uh, focusing on like intentions and values is also crucial I think and that's why this question should be asked the person who asked it should ask themselves like what they could do that would actually change this and which could add value because i definitely don't know this person so i can't say what are the concrete actions they can take but definitely adding some social value could be super useful very cool like when um, Shamala said the first point about like the product, I had in mind an article which I um, read recently about like um, I'm I'm into video games and like in a few weeks we'll, we'll be uh, there The Last of Us 2, which is like a really huge game for PlayStation, and um, for this day game the uh, studio took like. Um, a very broad approach when it comes to accessibility for people who have like um, visual or hearing impaired. So they have um, a high contrast mode and you could basically tweak all the graphic settings so that you could play this game even if you're blind, even if you like, if you hear nothing, and um, like this is really, really cool because like a friend of mine, he's uh, he can't hear, so this is like really um, cool for him because like first time he has like a game which gives him, which helps him actually play this and enjoy it more. So this is like really, really cool, and like thinking of the the product, which is obviously like the core of a company. This is like like really, really cool. Uh, Clemens, we recently had a speaker in our accessibility meetup in Berlin who talked exactly about that accessibility in games oh, and wow, the wealth cool. of knowledge is just amazing. And here you can see the, the recommendation and network effect. I know people that I can recommend to you, which I will do after this. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Already love it. Already love it. Um, all right. We have um, another question. I will put it uh, here on our chat before. Um, what would you say is the single most important action a company as an entity can take to increase its diversity apart from being non-discriminatory in their hiring process? Um, I think, like I mentioned before as well, to look for talent in the correct places. I think that is important because there are women, there are people of different backgrounds and from different places. It's hard to find them, obviously, if you go to the right groups and be present. I think um, this is what is missing from hiring process, in my opinion, that you want talent to come to you. And most talent that comes to you are people of particular backgrounds or, you know, or gender or whatever it is. So look for diversity. Don't just stay and wait for them, people to come to you. So go out and reach out. That's a really good point. And one of the things that I want to add is like diversity is not like a check mark that, you know, some manager checks on, uh, on, on their, you know, 
performance thing it, it's not that like if you you have to be committed to diversity which means like you have to believe that diversity and inclusion makes it a better place a better world it makes better products it, it brings value to the business so you have to as a company as a, you have to have a good vision and strategy on why do you think that you need diversity you have to be very very clear on on that and if if the whole leadership for me personally diversity and inclusion is a top down thing it's it's not it, it's really hard to push it from bottom up like you know if if your ceo says like hey we believe in diversity and inclusion because of these these things it trickles down to the level of okrs which means you can have like accountability like you know um, diversity is not just gender diversity it, it is so much multifaceted and it really depends on the context it really depends on the product it really depends on the company so it's really really important that you have to believe why do you need diversity and inclusion and live by it and everything will then you know you, you will then reach that progressive state where you will see this in each and every aspect of what you do it you know so this is for me like the most important thing that you shouldn't think that it's a check mark that you can check away i i can add on to that imagine what change would happen if uh, it was expected from managers to have heterogeneous teams if they were measured by the fact how innovative or how big the innovative potential of their team is because of their different uh, or the, the, the diversity they have in the teams apart from that um, i feel that if, if I had to put it to one single thing, it's don't have sea levels with just men. Don't have it. If you start out with a company, I mean, how many pictures do we actually see of startups and, you know, the founder and then three white dudes with their shirt and then they're standing there like this. And it's just, I, to be honest, I've had enough. I've had enough of this. It's just, it's not that I don't like seeing men standing there in nice poses. I mean, whatever they want to do makes them happy. That's great. But it's just, it's the, 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 the influx of all of these pictures and they all look the same. They all look the same. There is no change whatsoever. So even before you start a company, think about that fact. And if you have a company, make sure that you are not just you know your your bros from university that you are starting the company with and that later on will be on sea level it, it's a representation thing and if i already see a not just one quota woman that's also a fact not just one quota woman up there but two or three and maybe a person of color and maybe a person who's openly living with disabilities or a person who's openly on the lgbtqia plus spectrum which we haven't talked about a lot today i feel um what does that signal to me? Yes, I can see myself up there. That's great. I'm welcome there. So I will apply and I will see this as a great example and I will see this as innovative. And that unlocks so much potential, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot we can do, but if I have to choose one thing, it will be that. Like that, that's a really good point because like, I think we have already a lot of like really good role models for I don't know, like female sea level stuff, but um, they like, yeah, we don't show them or I don't know, we, we don't see them. No, no Clemens, Clemens, the problem is a completely different one. I don't know which okay. study it was, but this week there was a study done in, uh, in on British companies and the, the quotes that we got back from that survey, it was just horrible. There are not enough women. I don't think that a woman can do the job and so forth. It was, it, it added on to itself. And even the, like the headline from the very neutral body who did the survey was horrendous uh, sayings about women and leadership and so forth. <laughs> So it's, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, it's, it's a man's problem per se. I've had, I've seen and experienced also a lot of discrimination from women against women, because again, we are raised with a bias, but it's just like, when you see this, how can you not get mad? That's just a feeling that I have. How can you not get frustrated and want to change things? And a lot of the times when I speak to men, I have a feeling that us women who are active in the diversity sphere, we live in this bubble, right? And then I talk to other men and other women in the sphere and they know what I'm talking about. But people outside of this filter bubble have no idea what I'm talking about. And they're like, oh, I never knew. And I'm like, don't you look around and notice how many people who are different from you work in your company? So for, for us, it might be very apparent for other people, it's not. And again, the first step is awareness, but just like this, this, this approach that still persists in a lot, like in a lot of layers of society, 
And you see that I get very emotional when I talk about this because, as I said, I was raised in a family that was super, super just male bias and whatnot. Um, so just that it's still around in the year 2020 is unfathomable for me. And it's mindset. It's about mindset and making these opportunities and, and, and seeing a person for what they are, person. But, but I can totally understand that you get emotional for that because I, I, I just can try to assume like all the stuff that you guys have to face like all, all your life kind of like thing, you, you know what I mean? And like there's a lot of, I guess, like a lot of anger that like a person like me never had to have because it was easy for me. So I never had to be angry because like there was a guy who was like promoted and not me even though I was better or something like that. And um, yeah. like when you said about, uh, when you uh, said that, like the, the emotional part kind of like resonated in me because um, when, like when I think of that sometimes, you know, like guys or I don't know, people say, oh, don't be so angry, calm down. And um, I, I just think like in my, in my head, I just think, I mean, obviously you don't get why they are angry because like you never had to be angry to actually change something. I mean, anger is like most of all, it shows you that there's something not right. So that there's like some kind of injustice and um, anger kind of like fools the power to bring change to, to fight against something like that. And yeah, maybe, maybe I just realized that it's a privilege to be very rational because I never had to be, I don't know, angry. Very, very nice point. Good learning from but, me. But, but it means you care. It means you care. And that's the most important thing. If you don't care, you, you're not interested. But if you care, you are. And that's when you get invested. And that's when you want to change things. And again, this is what we see with the demos that are going on this week yes. and so forth. If people didn't care, they wouldn't do a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Um, there are no more questions um, in the chat. So um, thank you, all three for like your talks and having this like really nice like insights um with the questions uh thank you for your questions in the live stream so um i just guess we just wrap this up thank you that you've been here i wish you a very nice evening and yeah i hope you guys um learned something and i don't know like follow these guys on twitter like uh, do good stuff all right and uh have a nice day and goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye.